What's up everyone? Welcome back to the channel and welcome to the studio. You saw the title. These are my five tips for wedding shows. So I've been getting quite a few questions about wedding shows lately from people I know that have been shooting me text messages, DMs, people talking about wedding shows coming up. So I wanted to give you guys my quick five tips for current wedding shows and some also some feedback on current wedding shows as to what to expect and what you need prepared for in this video. Now I will preference, I've made a couple of videos on wedding shows already. I'll link them in the description down below that I made from prior years. None of them have been in post COVID times, but it doesn't really matter because they haven't really changed that much. Let's get into tip number one. Tip number one is about your booth, your setup. Do not bring your full DJ setup and that's your booth. Do, please do not set up your booth as your DJ setup at events. Like it's, don't bring speakers, don't, don't bring your big speakers, don't bring, don't do that. Please. And I'm going to insert a video clip here of what our setup is. I've tweaked this over the years. Like I've got it to the point where it's really cool. We got some custom stuff specific to our booth for wedding shows. You don't need to go to that level. Here's what you need to do. All you need to do is bring a DJ controller. All you need is a DJ controller or turntables or whatever you have. You can put on a table. You can bring your DJ booth too. If you have DJ furniture, you can bring your booth in, set your booth there. If you don't, just put a nice scrim table or use the table provided and put your turntables or whatever on that table. That's all you need to say, hey, I'm a DJ. You don't need to bring speakers. You don't need to be playing music. If you want to play music and your wedding show allows it, just bring a small speaker. Bring your ceremony speaker. If you got the Bose S1, the JBLs, the LD Maui 44s, we use the, or not the Maui 44s, the Maui 5 Go, a small speaker. That's all you need. You could bring a Bluetooth speaker. That's all you need. What you could also do is bring a TV. If you got a TV, you can throw some video content up there, some pictures. I personally don't do that because we actually hang a sign. A TV is a lot of work to bring to a show and we just haven't done it. I'm trying to get it to be efficient, but our booth is literally just our DJ booth. And actually it's one, it's not even my custom booth. It's literally just one of our Pro X flat black tables. We throw a controller on top of it. Lighting wise, if you want to bring columns or totems, you can do that if you wish with movers on top. Be cautious of light pollution. You don't want to have your movers kind of shining in your neighbors and some wedding shows actually prohibit that. So if you do bring movers, have them shooting on the ceiling. I personally don't bring movers anymore. All we bring is up lights on the back wall and so around our booth. So we'll light up kind of our cocktail tables we bring and we'll just have up lighting. And normally we'll just put it on a fade. We've done it in the past where we actually control it via an iPad. So there's different programs out there. ADJ's got one, Show Express is another, where you can actually control your lights with an iPad. And it's a cool gimme thing to be like, hey couple, what's your wedding color? Pink, voila, all the lights are pink blue here I can change it you want to change the color pick your wedding card it's a way to start a conversation we don't do it anymore I should probably look into doing that again but that is for a future video so yeah you want to keep it very simple and plain in your wedding booth you just want a DJ controller to say hey I'm a DJ and then you really want marketing material you want a big sign that says wedding DJ or DJ here or your brand name if it says DJ that's cool too. Ours is fusion sound and lighting so it's not as clear that we are a DJ company because we do lighting and sound and DJing. So we have banners additionally that say DJ lighting planning. We have all these other aspects of the company. So have a big sign says what your company is. Use some simple up lighting or pars around your booth and then have a DJ controller. Then you're going to want some brochures. Maybe you want some gimme items. A lot of times nowadays we give out gifts for our clients. So we have little custom fusion sound lighting gift bags and we give away these stemless wine glasses. So if you are have time to order them, uh, discountmug.com is where we got ours. They're about $2.50 a piece when you order a thousand. We have a bunch of them, and then you can buy some gift bags, and put them these little goodie bags to give the clients when they fill out your form, which we're gonna get to in point two. But I do wanna preference, you don't need to have something fancy like that. You literally can go to the dollar store, buy yourself some gift bags, buy some dollar store candy, throw it in uh, all the different gift bags, have yourself like 30 or 40 of them pre-made up and have your business card and brochure in there. You're gonna wanna hand them out to clients 
and wedding vendors and we're gonna get into those in the next two points but i highly recommend in your booth having some sort of thing that you're giving out other than just business cards and brochures so we use stemless wine glasses we've used candy in the past it doesn't have to be complicated it doesn't have to be over complicated you can literally just go to the dollar store buy gift bags and candy and it'll work but let's get into point number two this is about forms this is honestly should be the number one thing on this whole entire list that you should do is make sure you have some way to capture all of your couple's data and information best way to do that is to have a form via your crm client relation manager i personally use honeybook there's dj event planner there's a lot of other ones out there simple's a new one out there on the market you want to have a form that the clients can fill out so you can get their name their email, their phone number, and their wedding date. Those are the most important things. Name, date of wedding, email, and phone number. You get those four items, you're golden. You can go a step further on ours. We like have a list of all the things we offer and they can check box what they are. If they don't have a date selected, they can select a year that they're gonna get married. But the biggest thing is having that info in hand. Yes, these wedding shows are gonna give you all of the brides that come to the wedding show, all of their data, but the key is those clients that you talk to personally, you wanna get their data immediately for the last point that we talked about in terms of following up because that big mass database, when that gets sent out to all the vendors that were at the show, normally it's like two or three days later, that email is gonna be spammed to no tomorrow. That number is gonna get blasted with text messages from all these other vendors. At these wedding shows, it's not just wedding vendors, there's also like the resorts, the giveaways, and I've seen like contractors there and leaf gutter installs they're just looking for leads and they're just going to dump all those emails into mass mail funneling systems and those people's emails are going to get spammed to no tomorrow so you want to have their info at the show so you can follow up asap to get a consultation in place before that takes place other creative ways and tips around collecting their info on forms so what we do is we use honeybook of course and we generate a specific form for wedding shows. And with that specific form, I can collect all their info and also I can tag all the people that fill out that specific form as a wedding show lead from that specific wedding show. So for instance, Wedding Show Greensboro 2023. I know every person that fills out that was tagged with that. So then I can queue for automated emails to go out in my pipeline for those. So it's completely automated. That is a very high level thing. Go check out my tutorials on HoneyBook if you need a little more info on HoneyBook. Or you can always schedule a call with me. I have a open link down there. It's a small fee. You guys can have an hour session with me to learn more about whatever it is you want, whether it's lighting, automations, tips, tricks, videos, business advice, etc. But going on from there, that HoneyBook form, you can actually get a link to it specifically. I take it a step further. We use a hidden web page on our website. So like ours will be fusionsoundandlighting.com slash wedding show 23 GSO, which it's only for us to use, but basically we'll have that on all of our computers and tablets at the actual wedding show for all of our guys. If it's just you, you can have it on your laptop and your tablet to have the people fill it out. And then when they fill out the form, you give them their little gift bag as a thank you for filling out the form. Little other things around that as well. And still sticking with tip number two about collecting their info, QR codes. QR codes are huge. We actually print out on an eight by 11 piece of paper. We use cardstock. It literally just says Fusion Sound Lighting. It's a big QR code and says scan this. We literally tape them all over the outside of our booth so that anybody that's walking by, if we're busy talking to clients, they can scan that QR code. And what does that QR code take it to? It's a hidden web page on our website that literally is the wedding show form. And then there's more info below it. But literally, it's just the form again. We're just trying to get their info. The one that's on the QR codes, like I said, it has more info below. It explains what we offer. So it's got the form at the top and then it's got a list of things we offer and then it's got the form at the bottom the other one that we use is just the form you can use it it could be the same thing utilizing qr codes and having them plastered everywhere is really big 
I know some guys that have gone so far with multi-ops. They print specific QR codes for all of their guys and they make hidden web pages for each one. And when the client scans it, it says, hi, you just met Rick from Fusion Sound and Lighting. Blah, 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 blah. Fill out the form. You just met Marcellus. Like I said, there's really cool ways you can use for wedding shows, but the biggest thing is having ways to capture all of their info. Have forms, specifically electronic forms, linked to your CRM so you can follow up easily with these people. Have QR codes everywhere around your booth, have the same QR code on your brochures, have ways to easily gain the information from all these potential couples. All right, moving on to tip number three, we've covered the booth itself, we've covered the most important thing, which is having an easy way to capture all of their info. And now we are on tip number three, and this is related to having a script already prepared for how you're going to talk to all the couples that come up to you and a list of commonly asked questions already prepared so that you are sharp and on point. This is sales 101 right here, having a go-to script. I don't really necessarily have a set one I use every time I've used many ones, but the one I always tell the guys is, you always want to say, hey, when's your wedding? Hey, who's the bride? Because there's normally a group of them. That's the initial one. Hey, looking for a DJ. Hey, you need entertainment. Hey, you need lighting. That's, you need to have something to talk to them. Then they say, yes. You say, awesome. When's your wedding? You just ask them, when's the date? Awesome. When's the location? Or where's the location? You don't necessarily need to be looking at their date to see if you're available or not. You're really just starting that conversation. If you do know you're available off the top of your head, that's cool as well. Then you can recommend another company if you're already booked. But when's your wedding date? Where are you getting married? Awesome. What are you looking for in terms of music? Like what's your style? What's your genre? Do you like hype? Do you like club? You just want to start asking questions and you want to get them talking. Preferably, a lot of them, they'll just start talking and talking and talking and you just sit back there and you listen and you listen. But this right here is sales 101. It's the same sort of thing you go through in any sort of video consultation you do with a client. It's just in person. Pretty easy to do. I mean, you're just asking general questions, but the big thing you need to prepare for is commonly asked questions. So questions like they're going to ask you, have you been to this venue before? Are you available? What is your price? That's going to be the biggest one. What is your price? What do you offer? So you want to prepare answers for these things. So what do you offer? So have something for that. For me, I'm always like, we're a multi-op DJ company, but we're also a production company. So we have five different DJs that are all in-house employees. It's a whole spiel. I mean, we have this cool planning app. We offer uplighting. We offer all these services. All our DJs are mixing trained people that do all this shit and blah, blah, blah. Good one for you guys to remember is when someone asks are you available you can literally say well if you just give me one second i'll pull it up and then you want to ask them a question while you're looking it up just a random one it could be literally what's your wedding colors what are you looking forward to most in your wedding what have you planned so far what vendors have you booked so far just something for them to talk while you're looking up your dates to see if you're available if they ask you what is your price point i am a big proponent of not giving exact prices at the wedding show because I want them to fill out my form. I want their info so I can follow up with them and so that I can present our company in the best light with all the info as to what makes us awesome if they won't like let me talk to them right there. So what I always train all my guys is to tell them our average. A typical wedding is about $2,000. If you want exact pricing, if you fill out this form, I'll send you a full pricing brochure with a breakdown of all the DJs that are available on your date, the price points, the enhancements, everything that's available, our bundle options, or in some cases your package options, and you can look through and see what best fits you. Awesome, fill out the form. Again, we're trying to go back to point number two, we want them to fill out the form. So all of your questions, all of your things, you want to transition it to filling out the form. If you get to a rocky point in a conversation, if you're talking to like an introvert and all you're doing is kind of just talk, 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 and they're not really giving you, giving you any info, you can end the conversation in a way and be like, how does that sound? Oh, okay. Or something like that. Cool. Would you mind filling out this form with all of your information so I can send you a full breakdown of everything we just talked about, all the things that we offer, the prices, the details, etc. And in exchange, I got this awesome little gift bag here just for you. There you go. That's where the gift bag comes in is to convince people to fill out the form if they're on the edge. That way, hey, you're getting this candy gift bag. Hey, you're getting this stemless wine glass. Hey, you're getting XYZ, you name it, swag, something. That's a cool way 
to transition into it. But again, come up with a script, know everything you're gonna talk about, know all the commonly asked questions that people are gonna ask, and if you are struggling to come up with this, all you need to do is think back to your previous consultations. Every bride or lead or whatever that's talked to you, whether it's on email, texting, what questions do they always ask? Write them down, have answers, because you're gonna be asked those at the wedding show. Tip number four for your wedding shows, do not underestimate talking to other vendors. And I'm not just talking about other vendors, I'm talking about DJs, photographers, planners. You want to be a social butterfly and talk to every single vendor at that wedding show if you can. Other DJs are awesome allies to have because if they have to, if they're already booked out on a date, they can send leads your way. Vice versa, if you're booked out, you can send leads their way. Of course, all the other vendors are just ways to get yourself more referrals, more leads. But the biggest thing you just want to go around and exchange business cards. All you need to do is just walk up to each of the booths and be like, hey, what do you offer? I just wanted to exchange business cards. Done. Done. Just go around, exchange business cards with all the vendors there. We like to take our gift bags around and be like, hey, uh, we're just giving out our gift bags. Where, do you have a business card? And then it looks really good on us because we're like giving them something. And they're like, oh yeah, here's a business card. I don't got anything to give you. Some of the food vendors, they'll give us cupcakes and stuff. It's, it's a great way. It's awesome. If you have a little gift, give it to all the vendors. Get the business cards. Just be a social butterfly. Again, in our market, the DJ world, our biggest allies are gonna be other DJ companies, planners, and venues. Planners and venues are almost guaranteed to be booked before us, then it comes to DJs. Everyone else is a toss up at the same time. DJ, photographer, videographer, caterer, all those are kinda of decided at the same time. Planners and venues are always decided first, so if those vendors are there, absolutely make sure you talk to them. Point number five, last point, and this applies to everything we've just talked about. Your whole wedding show is useless if you do not do tip number five, and that is to follow up, follow up. And I'm not just talking about the couples, I'm also talking about the wedding vendors that you got all their business cards from. The couples are the most important, so if you collected all of those data points, all the information from all the couples you talked to, you wanna hit them with an email that night. That night when they're at dinner talking, right after the wedding show, most of the people go to the din go to dinner with the people that were there with or they go back to talk with their spouse. So you wanna hit them with a brochure, all the info you got, not all the info, but you wanna hit them with that brochure that you said you were gonna send them that night. Absolutely hit them with that brochure that night. Then you wanna follow up with a text either that night or tomorrow morning, tomorrow afternoon, and you wanna periodically keep following up with these clients unless they reply. That's one of the biggest things. I'm always big on people when they fill out my form, they're getting a contact from me every single day, whether it's a text or an email, until they respond back to me. I just want clarity that they saw the information, and that's what most of my questions are. So we first send them that brochure, and literally right below it's like, would you like to schedule a consultation to talk further? Because we want to have them on a consultation because when we sit down one-to-one -one after the wedding show, we got a high likelihood of booking that client. So that's where our big push is to get consultations. That text message the next day is, hey, so-and-so, great talking at the wedding show. Wanted to see if you wanted to set up a consultation to talk further. That's the biggest conversation. The third one is, hey, haven't heard back from you. Did you get the brochure and everything I sent? Are you ready to schedule a consultation? Again, we're always trying to push the consultation. One big thing, when you're following up, all of your follow-up emails, all of your follow-up texts, always end them with a question. We want a question to get a response from the client. So don't just send a bro uh, brochure that says, here's the brochure from the wedding show. End it with a question. Would you like to see a proposal? Would you like to talk about booking, would you like that schedule consultation? Whatever it is that you do in your sales funnel, you wanna end everything in a question. Now, that's following up with the couples that you talk to. The second part is following up with all of the wedding vendors that you talk to. You want to, this is gonna take a little bit of time, but go through each of the business cards, send them either a text or an email that says, hey, blah, 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 was great meeting you at the wedding show. If you talked about something, you can mention it. Now, this doesn't just apply to couples, it also applies to the wedding vendors. So all of the wedding vendors, the next day, or you know, they probably might be a little bit busy also following up with their clients, they might have consultations, et cetera. It really depends 
when your wedding show falls. A lot of ours are on Saturdays and Sundays. So I like to wait until maybe midweek of the next week, so like Wednesday, and shoot them a text or shoot them an email and be like, hey, so-and-so, it was great getting to meet you at the wedding show. And then you just go from there how you want to interact with this client. So. People like planners, people like venues. Maybe you say, hey, would love to grab a cup of coffee and talk further about your business, about your venue, about your planning service. Those ones, you might wanna get closer on a one-to-one -one level. You can also go a little foregoing on them and be like, hey, would love to talk about getting on your preferred list. A lot of times with like videographers, photographers, and caterers, I, that's kind of the statement I say is like, hey, it was great getting to meet you at the wedding show. Your food was amazing. I'd love to put you on my preferred vendor list. Would you be able to put me on yours as well? So you wanna go back and forth with them as well. So you're gonna put them on your preferred vendor list and they're gonna put you on theirs. So that's kind of the ask. Make sure you follow up with those vendors because those vendors are methods of getting you more couples. And more couples equals more leads, equals more bookings, equals more money. So last and final tip, number five, is to follow up both the couples and with the wedding show vendors that are there as well. And that right there, guys, is five tips. Me just sitting here rambling about this was all off the top of my head. I literally wrote down the five things I wanted to talk about and made this whole entire video. If you guys enjoyed this video, be sure to hit that like button, hit the subscribe button. If you guys need any info whatsoever, if you'd like to schedule a consultation call with me to talk further about this stuff, Again, there's a link down below to a, a Calendly where you guys can pay a little fee and you can get an hour of my time to talk about whatever it is you want. I love business. I love talking about leads, generations, automations, emails, follow-ups, all that is awesome stuff. So if you guys want to do that, it's in the description down below. Leave a comment down below if you got any other wedding tips that I missed out in this video. And uh, like always, guys, keep the record spinning and I'll see you guys in the next one. And kill those wedding shows. Get a bunch of leads and book a lot of weddings for 2023 because we're about to dominate 2023, baby. Let's go. Peace.